Obama's got to go. Play golf. Obama's got to go. Shoot some hoops. Obama's got to go. Have a smoke. Obama's got to go. Make a speech. Obama's got to go. Oh, you mean he's got to go? Now you got it. Well, he's been going for long enough. Obama's got to go. And then he's got a fake name. He's changing his name. We don't know where he's born. Uh, he comes from nowhere to become president. I mean, it just, I mean, the evidence is overwhelming. But this is all public source and verified in his three articles. But you need to read all three parts. Uh, the story of Obama all in the company. Part one, part two, and part three at Infowars.com. It's Obama's passport. As if his passport means something. Now, this came out on the heels of them shredding and destroying his mother's passport, which would be stamped where he was at what time. When he was born, the evidence shows in Kenya, but we know he gave up his citizenship and became Barry Sitaro, like Anakin Skywalker became Darth Vader. He became Barry Sitaro and gave up his U.S. citizenship. That is confirmed. That's mainstream news. Okay, and they try to abscond that evidence by only focusing on Kenya. And I'm not bashing those that do. It's just this is smoking gun. Now, here it is. Oops, Obama mama, passport destroyed. State Department claims records gone uh, for Stanley Ann Dunham prior to 1968, uh, uh, around the time that uh, old Barack Obama was born in 1961. Continuing, White House offers a glimpse of President Obama's passport documents, shows birthplaces of Hawaii. So they... They're, they're desperate. They won't put out the original passport, just a receipt of it. Wayne Madsen, go over your groundbreaking report, the new stuff you've uh, discovered, and other things you haven't put uh, in Part 1 or Part 2 or Part 3. You've got the floor. Wayne Madsen, go over it. Well, I started this investigation by looking at the company that President Obama went to work for after he graduated from Columbia, and it was Business International Corporation, and that was a company that had close ties to the CIA. They used some of their quote-unquote journalists uh, as CIA cover uh, officers overseas. Uh, now, in his book, uh, Obama says, well, I went to work for a company in Manhattan after I graduated from Columbia, but it was the company, the CIA. It wasn't a company, and, and uh, he was very uh, disingenuous with talk, uh, about talking about that. This was a company that had access to some of the biggest, uh, most powerful people in the world, including uh, Soviet Premier Alexei Kosygin, Generalissimo Franco of, of Spain, uh, and it, obviously this company did outreach to a lot of leftist uh, leaders in places like Africa uh, and Asia and other, other parts of the world, including Latin America. And, and then I started looking at, of course, uh, his mother and her time, uh, in Indonesia especially, but also Pakistan. It turns out she was working not only for the Ford Foundation on microfinancing projects, and I, I, I have information that uh, uh, states that one of the CIA economic officers at the U.S. Embassy in Jakarta worked on the same exact project while she was there, financing, um, uh, microfinancing of, of for, for these farmers and artisans in central Java. Now, she, uh, Obama, uh, 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 Ann Dunham, Toro takes her son at seven years old into Indonesia following the CIA-inspired coup. Uh, two years later, uh, Lolo Satoro's stepfather was called back by General Suharto from uh, Hawaii, where he met uh, Obama's mother in 65, but prior to the CIA coup, uh, and he went to work uh, for uh, the Suharto's army. Now, that they killed an estimated up to one million uh, uh, Indonesian citizens, a lot of ethnic Chinese, and also uh, reported members of the uh, Indonesian Communist Party. So this is the environment she takes, seven-year-old Barack Obama. Uh, I, I mean, what, who in their right mind would do that unless you were, you know, being assigned uh, to work for the agency uh, in those days? I also looked at Barack Obama Sr. Now, he was airlifted. It was called Project Afri Airlift Africa. It was funded by... Uh, a $100,000 grant from the Joseph P. Kennedy Foundation, but that's because Tom Amboya, who was a Kenyan nationalist leader, pro-U.S., tied in with the CIA, 
decided he didn't want to take State Department money because that would look too suspicious. So they looks like they laundered some of this money through the through the Joseph P. Kennedy Foundation in 1960. Now remember, John Kennedy's running for president then, uh, so that's building up his his uh, national security credentials, helping out uh, the agency. And the reason for bringing these 230 students from Kenya, Tanganyika, and other soon-to-be independent British colonies in eastern and southern Africa was to compete with the Soviets and Chinese who were training their own leaders in these, in these uh, newly independent nations, and it was clearly to uh, uh, gain influence with these new governments. Well, right, and, and we have to remember the same year, the same year that Barack Obama Sr. was brought over in the CIA Airlift Africa project is the same year that uh, the Soviet Union opened the Patrice Lumumba University in Moscow for, this, for the whole purpose of training people from uh, these third world nations, uh, these newly independent countries. So this petition, we of course didn't have a Patrice Lumumba University, but we ferreted these students among various universities around the United States, and Barack Obama Sr. was the first. Uh, African student to attend the University of Hawaii, and he meets Obama's mother in where a little English class. So okay, your 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 phone was cutting out a bit. Uh, he meets his mother again. Barack Obama Sr. meets meets Mama, and of course, her daddy. You're going to get into has connections to the agency. He meets her where in a, in a Russian language class at the University of Hawaii. Uh, now, this is the height of the Cold War. Uh, the only people who would be taking Russian in a place like Hawaii, which was like a military, I mean, the military was all over Hawaii, the Navy, the Army, the Air Force, would be obviously people who were involved in some uh, way, shape, or form with intelligence or, 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 or were re being recruited into intelligence. And um, now... Um, uh, Stanley Armour Dunham, uh, the, the grandfather, there's a photo of him welcoming Barack Obama Sr. to, to the airport in Hawaii. Uh, now, we were told that they met for the first time at the Russian language class. It's clear now, this furniture salesman, we were told uh, Stanley Armour Dunham, grandfather, it was in the furniture business. It seems like he was in much, much more than just uh, selling furniture. Well, and then we have then we have a curious case of uh, his grandmother, uh, Madeline Dunham, who uh, who died uh, right uh, two days before Obama was elected president in 2008. Uh, the Obama campaign apparently didn't want her getting any interviews to the press. Maybe they were afraid she'd be like uh, Newt Gingrich's mother with a Katie Couric interview and slip up and say something that would have embarrassed them. But she was one of the first female vice presidents at the Bank of Hawaii, and now. Lo and behold, we find out that that bank was used by the CIA fund company in, in Honolulu to make payments to these dictators in Asia, like Suharto uh, and uh, Marcos in the Philippines and Generalissimo Chiang Kai-shek in Taiwan and the uh, Park Chung-hee in South Korea and the Liberal Democrats in Japan. <laughs>